under attack, you guys. I have never had this happen before. So earlier this spring, the kids came in one day and were like, mom, there's eggs all over the spinach in the greenhouse. And I was like, surely not. It was like March. Uh, so I didn't really think much of it until a few days later I went out there and sure enough, my spinach was coated in aphid eggs. Now that may not seem that notable to some of you, but we don't really have a lot of aphids here. Like I've hardly ever even seen them in Wyoming. And it was bizarre because it was like March and it was freezing outside. My greenhouse wasn't exactly toasty, but there were a bunch. Like where the heck did they even come from? Aphids can be a really big issue, but thankfully I have a secret weapon and I am going to show you how to make it today. I had also noticed when I discovered the aphids that there were lots of ants around my plants, which normally I don't have ants in my garden. We have ants other places, but I just thought it was weird. And then I learned that ants actually can farm aphids. How weird is that? Apparently the ants like the sticky stuff that the aphids leave on the plants. The ants eat it or whatever. So ants will like maintain aphid herds or something, or I don't know but they go together. So I'm also going to be adding something into my magic spray that will help keep the ants away. So another really good option here would be ladybugs. Uh, they love aphids. That would be a more of a permaculture type solution. However, I haven't bought ladybugs to add to my garden yet because it's been so cold, I think they would freeze off and die. So within the next couple weeks, I'm going to be getting some ladybugs and adding them to my garden. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna use this spray. Okay, so I'm actually gonna be showing you three different options that you can make today. One is for the littler bugs like aphids. One is for the bigger bugs. I use it on like cabbage worms, little green guys. And then the third one is a powder that you can use very sparingly uh, in certain areas where bugs might be entering your garden area. So the first recipe I'm gonna show you, it's super easy, is an insecticidal soap. You can buy these at the store, but I don't know why you would because they're so easy to make at home. All you're gonna do is fill up a quart jar with water and then add a teaspoon or two of a liquid soap. So I'm gonna use Castile soap today. You could also use any sort of like liquid dishwashing soap. And then to that, I'm going to add my secret addition, which is peppermint essential oil. Now, you could add all sorts of different essential oils to this recipe, especially any of the more herbal oils like rosemary or thyme or basil, but I'm picking peppermint because a lot of bugs really dislike the menthol in peppermint, and it's especially well known for repelling ants, which is what I need since we have this weird symbiotic ant aphid thing happening in the greenhouse. I'm just gonna give it a quick shake. Um, also, quick tip, I love these prayer lids that attach to a mason jar. I use them for all sorts of things, for my animal sprays, for my garden sprays, for my homemade cleaners. These are from Recap Mason Jars, and it's just another way to put my mason jar collection to really good use. Okay, recipe number two, I have another sprayer here. This is the one that I like to use for the bigger bugs, uh, the potato beetles, the cabin worms, and if you'll notice, I'm not really measuring much for any of these sprays. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Doesn't have to be perfect. So we're gonna grab an onion. This is actually one of the onions I grew myself that has been in the basement and it looks pretty good considering it's almost June and it's been in storage since like October. But anyway, we're going to cut up a medium onion, stick it in your blender. I'm also gonna toss in a tablespoon or two of cayenne pepper. You could also use chili peppers or chili powder. Um, I just happen to have cayenne. And then I'm going to add just enough water, a couple cups to keep things blending as it should and let the blender do its thing. Ooh. So once everything is blended up to a nice slurry, I'm going to add in two teaspoons of my liquid soap just to make sure that this mixture sticks to the plants. But I don't wanna add that before I start blending because I don't have a soapy, sudsy mess. And then if you want, you could also toss in, I don't know, 10 to 20 drops of essential oil. You could do peppermint again, or uh, tea tree oil, rosemary, basil, lavender, any of those herbal oils would be great. And then what I like to do is let this sit and kind of marinate for anywhere from a couple hours up to a couple days, just to let all of that oniony goodness kind of steep in the water. And then I'll strain out the chunks so it doesn't get stuck in my sprayer and use this as a sort of concentrate. So I'll add this, concentrate to a gallon 
jar or a gallon container like an old milk jug and then fill it up the rest of the way with water and then I'll just add it to my spray bottle and use it on the plants. I would recommend storing this mixture in your refrigerator when you're not using it just because it does have all those raw ingredients and it potentially could go bad a little quicker. Okay, so I have my two sprays and now I'll show you my secret powder. So this last little trick that I use, I use very, very sparingly. So what I'm gonna use in my little shaker jar here is diatomaceous earth. You may have heard of that before. It's popular in some homestead circles for chicken coops and things. Basically what it is is a bunch of fossilized algae that is teeny, teeny, tiny. And what it will do with insects is that it dries out their exoskeletons and kind of basically cuts them from the outside in. But the reason you need to be careful with it is because it will hurt all of the insects, even the good ones. It doesn't care. So I only use diatomaceous earth in small, small, small quantities in my garden and only when I absolutely need it. Okay, so I have this bin of diatomaceous earth or DE here in the barn. Sometimes I use it in my chicken coop. Um, so I'm gonna put some in my jar here. It is very fine, so it can irritate your lungs when you're using it, so just be careful. It's not something you have to be scared of, but you just don't want to stick your face in the bucket either. Okay, for my little shaker bottle, I love these lids, also from Recap. This is actually just their basic flip-top lid, but then they make these little shaker or strainer inserts. You just pop it in. I use these guys for everything, herbs, spices, diatomaceous earth. I also use it to strain my kefir in the kitchen. Um, that's another video for another day, but it's really, really handy. And it also just screws right on your mason jars. So to use this, I'm just gonna gently shake. And anytime I'm spraying something on my plants, whether it's like a liquid fertilizer or a bug spray, I start slow at first, do a test to make sure it's not going to burn your plants. And remember to never spray anything on your plants during the heat of the day that intensity of the sun can kind of fry things, even if the spray isn't damaging in and of itself. So just be cautious. So I've seen some people say that they wipe this insect soap on the leaves of their plants, like onto the eggs. Um, I don't have time to wipe my whole garden. So we're spraying. Okay, now with the DE, I am not going to sprinkle this all over my plants. Like sometimes people recommend that, but I do not do that. I don't want to harm the bees or the ladybugs or any of the beneficial insects. So I'm only going to be sprinkling this where I see the ants coming in. Now a quick reminder, I don't believe that sprays, whether they're homemade or store-bought are always the answer. Ultimately, I would like to address my pest problems in a more holistic way and deal with the health of the soil and the health of the plants or bring in predator insects that can deal with the pests instead of me just spraying like crazy. But sometimes those things can take a little while to get in balance. And so in the meantime, it can be handy to have organic, non-toxic sprays that you can use just to get you through. And if you are as intrigued by these handy little lids as much as I am, and you want to make your mason jar collection even more useful, I had the chance to collaborate with Recap and we have put together a very special kit for my homestead and garden friends. It includes the sprayer, my favorite little shaker insert, a soap pump, and a couple others. You can get it for $15 off and get free shipping. All you have to do is check out the link down in the show notes. You don't even need a coupon code.